In this episode, we're going to talk about our new lab notebooks. Now, some of the features of this new lab notebook. First of all, if you look inside, periodic table, laminated. Look on the back, all kinds of information. If you flip open this cover, we have even more information. Now, this cover actually serves two purposes. When you do a lab, I am never going to collect this book because in this book it has what they call duplicate pages. So, for example, if we would open up to this page where it says laboratory safety, um, I'm going to ask that you read that and there's a place for student signature and there's two copies. So you're going to give me one copy the way that you understand lab safety. And when you sign this, you're going to have this page as a protector of the sheets below it. Okay, Sort of like you do if you have a checkbook that does duplicates, carbonless copies. Now, when you're doing an experiment, if you look at page one, and then there's also, behind that is a page that says copy. Okay. You will always keep the originals and turn the copies in to me for grading. So you actually will never turn this lab notebook in, just the copies. Now, one thing we have to remember to do when we're doing our, our work is that we have to remember to put this flap in between the copies one and two. Okay, so when you write on this, it doesn't get transferred to the pages below it. Now, if you look at this, a little bit different. Um, experiment, subject, name, lab partner, <clears throat> the date, and whatever uh, period you're in, what class you're in, your first period, third period, whatever. Now, we're going to do some of the things similar to what we did last year. In the front of this book, you're going to see a table of contents. So you will fill out that table of contents just like we did in our previous book. The date, the experiment, and the page number that the experiment starts on. Okay. Now if you notice your notebook is divided into two columns and on the right hand side we'll go ahead and start with our purpose, brief description of materials that we need, and you'll outline the procedure step by step in order that enough to be able to be reproduced. Okay. On the right hand side is where we'll organize the collector data and observations. So when you're setting up your lab notebook you do not have to have the entire procedure written out ahead of time. We're going to write it as we go with just enough information to be able to reproduce the experiment. Now if we run out of room we we'll just go to the second. Okay, even though we're not going to write the procedure out ahead of time in our lab notebook, it's still very important that you read the procedure ahead of time. And the only way that I'm going to know that you've read it ahead of time and are prepared is if I give you a pre-lab quiz. So in the Moodle, before an experiment, we're going to have a pre-lab quiz based on the pre-lab video and the pre-lab or the, and the experiment itself. Now, this is nothing unusual. Uh, when you take a science course in college, a lab course, uh, you will have pre-lab quizzes. You're going to take a quiz first thing before you've ever even done the experiment. And that's just a test that you've read and understand what you're going to do that day. Because just as if you were cooking in a kitchen, you wouldn't wait until the day you wanted to make something to first read over the recipe to make sure that, hey, do I have all the ingredients? Do I have all the equipment do I need? Do I need a special pan to make this? Um, so it's the, same, it's the same situation. So it'd be short, probably less than 10 questions relating to lab, and that's what we'll do in, in the Moodle.
we've got here is... Where was I? Okay, 49 compounds. No, no, nope. Nearly all of these are identifiable. In short, nothing new. Is this why you wanted the chromatograph? You said nearly all identifiable. Yeah. Just this one, uh, peak 37. Looks like an acid derivative. Although those side... You must have really thought you were onto something. I'm sorry. Can it be synthesized? Uh-uh. This one's Mother Nature's kitchen. End of story. Why? What is it you think you've got? I don't think. I know. Share it. What's the problem? ...for his juju kit. And there it was. There's only one fly in the serum. I can't reproduce it. What do you mean? None of the new samples work. And I have very little of the original serum left. That's what I mean when I say I can't reproduce it. Wait a minute. I don't understand. What don't you understand? I found a cure for the plague of the 20th century, and now I've lost it. Haven't you ever lost anything, Dr. Bronx? You pass your car keys? Well, it's rather like that. Now you have it, now you don't. Your notes are gone? I have my notes. I followed my notes. Your notes must be wrong. They're not. Then explain it. I... I can't. Okay. The first thing I do when I get to L.A. is I get Dr. Krauss and his people can set up a real lab down here. There's nothing wrong with this lab. We've got everything we need. Look. This is Major Lee. We need help. We're going to do a little bit of an introduction to a new Daddy, lab. Get down. All right, we've got the cat on the roof of the gazebo. Great. You never have to turn this in for me, okay? Ah, <coughs> uh, pre. Uh, 